There is nothing wrong with high intensity exercise. There is nothing wrong with wanting to be lean and with pursuing that. And we have to stop pushing a paradigm that says otherwise in this pro metabolic space because we are just shooting ourselves in the feet. Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sally and it means so much that you've stepped by. If we haven't met yet, thank you especially for being here. We need to talk. In the pro metabolic space, um, there is this paradigm that I have seen pushed a lot that is very anti high intensity exercise. And I will say, I will say, first of all, with good reason, to an extent, with good reason, because um, this is a space that many people are coming to from one of restrictive dieting, from overtraining, from under recovering, from going into fitness and nutrition with this perspective of needing to deprive, a deprivation mindset, needing to maybe work out to earn food, um, or trying to just essentially run themselves ragged to maintain a body that society has for some reason deemed acceptable or deemed beautiful. Um, so there's really this root level issue for a lot of people of being constricted and bound by this para paradigm and therefore living in a state of deprivation. And to approach exercise from that Place, I don't think is healthy in any sense, not healthy mentally. And it certainly is not supporting your metabolism. It is not supporting your hormones because if we're not eating enough, if we're not recovering enough, and if we're not being smart in our workouts, we can actually see a detrimental effect. We can see our metabolic rate slow down. Um, we can see our hormones really get messed up. Women can lose their cycles. We, we know about these things because we hear them all the time in the pro metabolic space. But what I want to address today is the fact that because this isn't good, and we all know that that is not good, we are seeing this swing in the other direction. This idea that it is not okay to do high intensity exercise, essentially this trashing of people who are into things like um, CrossFit, maybe boot camp style workouts, Orange Theory. And the reason this is coming up is because I shared recently um, that I train at Orange Theory and that I actually work out at Orange Theory a few times a week myself. Um, and I had a few questions, all very respectful, but had a few questions after that about, you know, can you talk me through essentially your thought process for engaging in this kind of exercise? Because they've been told by people in this space that that kind of exercise isn't healthy. So that's what we're talking about today because unfortunately I think it has just been really neglected. It is not healthy to have too low of a body fat percentage. That is detrimental to our well-being, but it is also not healthy to have too high of a body fat percentage. And um, we can't just act like, and I'm not, not saying anyone in particular is doing that, but I think that we risk doing this and swinging to extremes. Um, it's not healthy to be overweight or to be obese. And yes, society has a long way to go when it comes to recognizing what actually is overweight and what is just different than the, again, that cultural paradigm that has been set in terms of what a slim body looks like. Um, but I think that all of us, for the most part, at least when looking at other people, can be pretty good judges of, okay, this person is legitimately overweight or legitimately um, maybe eating too much or doing something like that. And the point here isn't to be judging anybody, but rather it's to just be considerate about the fact that our tendency is to swing from one extreme to the other to, oh, I'm not eating enough. Oh, okay, I need to eat as much as possible. Don't engage in rigorous activity and vice versa. But the reality of it is we just have to figure out a way to support our bodies and to build up resiliency um, against stress and to minimize stress. Uh, and so for a lot of people, if you are coming from a really undernourished state um, or from just a place where your metabolism isn't supported in the first place, engaging with high intensity exercise isn't going to be productive because that is going to essentially put your body into conservation mode. It's saying, hold on to every bit of fat I have, slow down metabolism because you're in survival mode. It doesn't want to give anything up. And what that will actually do is make it so your body over time is burning fewer calories. 
And what will happen if we're undernourished um, is we'll start burning through muscle. We won't actually be burning through fat. All of that is negative, but that doesn't mean that cardio is bad. That doesn't mean that high intensity exercise is bad or that it is bad to want to have a lean physique. There is just a right way to approach this kind of thing. We can't look at an Olympic athlete or someone who is really good in a specific sport or um, who really just pursues fitness as a whole and is clearly in really good health and say, oh, they're doing cardio. Oh, they're running. Like they must be in metabolic turmoil. That's simply not fair. Like obviously we're looking at Olympic athletes and we're thinking, wow, um, it's amazing that they've been able to do that with their bodies. And I think that's where we have to shift the, shift the paradigm is there's nothing wrong with being into fitness. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have a physique, but are you looking at it from a perspective of constraint or are you looking at it from a perspective of wanting to optimize your well-being and wanting to do the most you can with this beautiful body you have been given. There's there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to just live into the live into the potential that there is for your body. Uh, and so something I kind of want to touch on here when it comes to body composition in particular, because again, in the pro metabolic space, we're very familiar um, with the fact that many people are going to come into this and gain a little bit of weight. And there's nothing wrong with that. And for some people, we actually might need to be at a higher body fat percentage than we came into it at in order to be healthy. But that doesn't mean we have to be holding on to excess fat body fat. I think a lot of people in this space are going to be familiar with this idea of like a set point or set point theory. And that is that every person has um, a weight pretty much at which they are going to function optimally and feel their best. We're aware aware generally of the idea that there is that point, but actually newer research has come to suggest that there's actually more of a range. And to clarify, this has less to do with a number on a scale and more to do with, we'll say, body fat um, and with your amount of muscle, so that body composition. But there's actually a range where a person can be thriving um, up to kind of a max set point of body fat percentage and then up to kind of or down to, we'll say, a minimum percentage of body fat percentage. And in that range, a person is going to feel great. Um, they're going to be able to live, you know, a normal, healthy life cycle is good. They're not obsessing about food. Uh, but if we go too far above that sub point, if we really get above the top end of that range, we're going to start seeing the negative effects of truly being overweight or having too much body fat. And if we go below it, it's the type of thing where you're going to see those hormone dysregulations, you're going to see your metabolism take a hit. And we're going to start to see kind of weird symptoms like really being obsessed with food and not able to let go of it. Um, I'm going to link a video in the description box by this guy named Jeff Nippard, who is just a fantastic resource in the fitness community. Obviously, when it comes to like mineral density coming from a different place, but he talks about kind of the science of being lean in this set point theory. Um, and then his girlfriend, actually, Stephanie Buttermore, she did this whole thing um, where she was a competitive bodybuilder or rather compete bikini competitor and even when she was in maybe more of a bulking phase she was still finding herself incredibly hungry just all of the symptoms um, of having a metabolism that is screaming at you to like nourish yourselves because you know you're not in a good state and she went into this journey that she called all in essentially where she just started eating until she was really satiated eating crazy number of calories every day um and she went through this process of doing that until yes she gained a lot of weight but her appetite started to regulate and she got back down to this this point that was optimal for her or this range that was optimal for her so i'm going to link some videos from both of them in the description box because it can go into this in more depth and i think it's a really good perspective for anybody to have when it comes to fitness and learning to work with your body specifically um but now let's get into the piece about okay so you want to engage and higher intensity exercise. Um, what makes that okay? What do we need to look for? And here's the first thing we have to realize is that we have to be recovering just as well as we are working out. Um, 
there's this whole overtraining under recovery piece that I see all the time as a trainer, people wanting to come in six to seven days a week. That doesn't give your body the time it needs to heal. And realistically, growth is going to be happening outside the gym, outside the studio. It's during your rest time that literally your muscle tissues are repairing and getting stronger. And if you are constantly beating yourself to death with cardio, like that's not going to get you anywhere. You have to give yourself time to recover. But on the flip side of that, like there's nothing wrong with getting your heart rate up. Like that has been shown time and time again to be good for us to train our cardiovascular endurance um, to train agility things like that but where we run into problems are when we are not recovering enough so consider again an olympic athlete yes they have a train a crazy training regimen but they are recovering just as hard as they are training. They are eating enough food. Protein is a huge piece. Like if you want to maintain a lean body, you really need to eat enough protein um, that your body is gonna be able to hang on to muscle and lose fat. And that's also gonna help your metabolism. It's actually gonna make it stronger. It has been shown time and time again to have a positive effect on your hormones if you have more muscle mass. But a big area I think in which people just fail to really support themselves is not eating enough protein. And so then your body is burning through muscle, slowing down your metabolic rate. And I put this very simply, please understand, like I know I might be oversimplifying some of this, but this is just meant to be like a ranty video because I think we need to talk about it. And I don't know, I am sorry if it's discombobulated. I hope that it just, it gets people thinking. I guess that's really the thing. So the protein piece, the recovery piece, these athletes are taking ice baths. They're taking magnesium baths. They are doing extensive foam rolling, extensive stretching. And that's something that, you know, if your whole life isn't again devoted to fitness um, or to your sport, like you're not going to be investing the time in recovering as well as you are training. So that's, that's what I would encourage each of you to consider is that, okay, if my body is supported in the first place, if I am able to handle the stress and I'm able to do this high intensity exercise, how can I make sure that I am recovering well enough that my body is actually gonna reap the benefits and my body is not just going to go into conservation mode, survival mode. That's what we're trying to avoid. And that's where the protein, that's where the recovery all comes into play. It's all about those inputs versus those outputs. We have to make sure our bodies are supported in order to handle a certain kind of exercise. But to simply say, oh, it's wrong to do X, Y, or Z is really missing a part of the picture. Like if you love to do that and you're doing it for the right reasons, then go for it. That's fantastic. Um, see what you can do with your body, but just make sure that you're taking care of yourself along the process. Um, make sure that you are getting what you need to perform optimally and working with your body instead of against it. And the last thing I kind of want to note is unfortunately in a lot of the, we'll say like group fitness, high intensity exercise environments, there is a culture that tends to be pretty negative, tends to be more like, oh, we need to work out so we can eat, or it's very image focused, which is so outdated in my opinion, and yet it is so prevalent. Um, and also there's this culture of just go, 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 go. Maybe it's very rep heavy. I was talking to someone about that. It's very rep heavy, but it's not focused on really adding a lot of weight, but we need to have that progressive overload. And we're gonna see more benefit, especially when it comes to weight training. Well, duh, when it comes to weight training, if we are adding more resistance, getting our bodies to, you know, that stronger, or that's, that is going to help us build muscle fibers and build strength more than just repping it out until your body is absolutely destroyed. It's a matter of training smarter, not harder. Um, and we need to pay attention to our form. I think that's the other thing. Sometimes in high intense high intensity group environments, there just aren't the resources um, from the instructor to give your form enough attention. And if that's not happening, we can end up with a lot of mus muscular skeletal problems. Um, low back injuries are like the typical example, knee problems, um, hip problems, and think, you know, excessive running too. Yes, that's going to cause these issues. So we just have to take it all into consideration. Like, are you seeing someone who can help you figure out your own imbalances and support your body in that way. Is your trainer actually paying attention to how you are performing each movement to make sure you're doing it properly? Are you getting enough rest? Um, are you, you know, getting enough magnesium? That's another big thing. Magnesium baths are really wonderful. Um, 
And also, are you getting comprehensive training? If we are constantly doing pushing movements, but we're never doing pulling movements, we're gonna see a lot of issues when it comes to posture, when it comes to posterior chain development. Um, and especially in a world where many people are sitting at desks, we're gonna see overdevelopment. This is something I really deal with, overdevelopment through the traps um, and through certain muscles up here, whereas your back muscles are gonna be weaker, your hamstrings are gonna be really tight, and that can just lead to really crappy posture. Um, and a whole host of injuries down the road. So these are all things to be mindful of. There's nothing wrong with not wanting to pour everything into fitness. Like, just be confident in yourself. Like, in the body that you have, in the body that you are supporting. I think that's, that's the biggest thing. But then if you want to pursue fitness, if you want to gain muscle and to be lean realize that that is okay just ask yourself why are you doing this and how do i need to support my body along the process i'm gonna stop ranting now i'm gonna stop venting i hope that this is helpful in some sense it's just a conversation that needs to be had um as always, I want to hear your thoughts. I want this to be a two-way street, so leave them in the comment section. I am going to be releasing some more pro metabolic fitness content coming up relatively soon, uh, but it takes a while um, in terms of just production, and I'm trying to work out a situation with my gym where I can actually go in there and film a little bit better. So we'll see what that looks like shortly, but do hang tight. I really appreciate y'all being here. Until next time, bye y'all.